Are you looking for a way to up your video production value, especially when you're out traveling? Well, good news, that's exactly what we're talking about today. So what is all this gear in front of me and how can it help you or what is the gear that I use while I've been out traveling for the last few months? Let's find out. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. So like I said in the beginning and you may have noticed over the last couple of months, I've been traveling for work so this corporate housing has kind of become like my base camp. And what I was trying to do was find a way to have a full like video kit that lets me get the same like high level of production value that I like to give you guys but have it with me wherever I go. And all of this gear that could fit in a carry-on suitcase uh, this is all what you've seen over the last few months and so what's making this video a little more difficult is since this is all of the gear like this is literally all of the gear I use uh, we're doing this with like my non uh, the stuff that I don't normally use so we don't normally use this camera we don't normally use this camera we definitely don't use this audio so we've had to like jerry rig everything and we're using a window right now so you could even do this with just a window there's a window in front of this apartment that we're using for the light instead of my light which is right right here but either way so the first thing you're gonna need right if you're making video Video is a video camera so my video camera of choice is the Panasonic GH5 now if you just if you follow the channel what like last Friday I just very recently released another in my uh, you know long list of why I love the GH5 videos it does have a smaller micro four third sensor but this camera does literally everything that you could ever want in a video camera it does 4k 60 it's got insane stabilization it's got all look at all these buttons and dials like I love I love this camera so much. This is what I use for everything. Um, the one thing that I will say is making these videos, like the one that about how much I love this camera and like this one right now, it's made so much harder because I'm used to using the GH5 for everything. And now that I'm not using it, it's, it's tough. It's tough. But a camera body like this by itself doesn't really get me much. Where am I gonna, I'm gonna put you on this chair. But you've got to build a system around your camera body and the next step in that system is lenses. So let's talk, I have three main lenses that I use with the GH5 and each one does something a little bit different. This is the Lumix 8-18 to and this, if I could only have one lens, it would be this thing. I love this lens. This is a full frame equivalent 16-35 to which is super wide angle. And since the GH5 doesn't have an additional crop in 4K or anything, you get the full, like you can use the full like capabilities of this lens. It's super light. Look how small this thing is. It's light, it's high quality. It does not have stabilization built into it, but anytime I'm like in front of the camera outdoors, I use this thing. I also take all of my thumbnails with this lens because I like that super wide angle, like structural look to the products that I take photos of. This lens not only is it wide, but it also gives you like macro photography things. I don't even understand how that works, but this lens is one of the best lenses ever made. I love, love, love this lens. My next lens that we would call the talking head lens is the Sigma 16 millimeter 1.4. Now this lens is quite popular. You could get this for like your Sony camera or you could get this for the Canon M mount now. Uh, but on those cameras, it's more like a 24 millimeter equivalent. Where on the GH5, since again, it has that two times crop, this is more like a 32 millimeter or more like a 35 millimeter. And that's my favorite focal length for talking head video. And this lens is insane. It's crazy sharp. The colors tend to be a little more red than on other lenses I use, but I really, it's its super high quality. Um, you could probably like, you could fight a dude with this lens. Like this thing is a, this thing is a huge, heavy, but beautiful, like it, this also does not have stabilization built into it, uh, but I only ever use this as the talking head lens because this is 1.4. And then my third and final lens is the Lumix 12-60. to uh, This is not the nice kit lens that comes with the GH5. This is the kit lens that I actually got with my GX9, um, but it works perfectly well. It's a 24 to 120 millimeter equivalent full frame. Um, it is a little bit slower. So what I use this for is like all of the B-roll. When I use the 4K live crop on the GH5, this is the lens I'm using because it is also really sharp. It's really small. Look at that, 24 to 120 millimeter. And look how small this thing is. Like I've seen no real reason. I've got a generic uh, cap on it. Uh, I've seen no real reason to upgrade it from this to the 12 to 60 nice one. So this lens does have stabilization built into it. And when I combine it with the GH5, it unlocks the Panasonic dual IS technology, giving insane, insane levels of stabilization. Like the GH5 and the Panasonic system, mm, 
Mm, there's a reason why I talk about it all the time and say how great it is. But okay, so we've got the camera, we've talked about the lenses, audio is more important than visuals in you know the online sphere and in general. So let's talk about how I capture my audio. So this is how I get all of the audio in, because I capture all my audio internal to the camera. This is the Panasonic, it's what, the DMW XLR1. So what this does is this gives you two XLR ports, two powered XLR ports on the GH5. I believe it also works with the S1, maybe the S1R and the S1H. So what this does is you just plug it in, boom. And now you get like pro level audio straight into the GH5. No additional batteries are needed. No additional anything is needed. Like you get the manual controls here and it overrides everything in the camera. So there's a setting that'll say XLR on. Everything goes through this. And then I plug my microphone straight in here and it works. You don't need an additional battery. It just works off the one battery inside of the GH5. And these batteries are gigantic and they last a long time. I get like two to three videos, like two to three whole videos, talking head and B-roll out of one GH5 battery. It's, it is the best. And look at that, look at that. But let's say I'm out and about and I don't wanna bring the XLR cables and I don't wanna bring the XLR microphone. What microphone do I use when it's just the camera, me, and like I'm out and about? So I very recently started using the Rode Video Micro again. Uh, long time viewers will know that this used to be my only microphone. Way back in the day when I had the G7, the Lumix G7, this was my only microphone. And this thing is fantastic for a couple of reasons. One, it has really good audio. Two, look how small it is. Look how small that thing is, it weighs nothing. And three, it doesn't need a battery. It's passively powered from your camera, which means I don't need to worry about charging it. I don't need to worry about whether it's on or not. I was using, and what we're using up here is the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus, which is a fine microphone, but you'll see here in a second when I talk about my camera bag and I talk about how I've actually been carrying all this stuff, um, it doesn't work as well. I need something that's lighter and I need something that doesn't weigh like, doesn't weigh the bag down. And look at that, it, it comes with a dead cat with when there's a lot of wind outside, this cuts down on it. And it's just great, look how light this thing is. You can, it doesn't add anything to the camera, but it does enough to give you good audio when you're out and about. And it just plugs right into the 3.5 millimeter audio jack on the camera. So this is my travel microphone, Rode Video Micro. But the microphone that I do use in studio, we haven't talked about it yet. I use the Audio-Technica, the AT875R. This is an XLR microphone that plugs into that adapter I was talking about. You do need phantom power to get this thing to work. So if you just plug this into a camera or like your computer or something, you don't have phantom power, this is not gonna work. But this is more of a budget uh, this is more of a budget microphone, but it sounds so darn good. Like I've considered upgrading to like one of the Deity S mics or one of the Rode XLR mics, but this thing is so good and it's so light and it's so compact. I just haven't, I haven't felt the need to upgrade from this. I really, really like this microphone. It comes with this little holder and the XLR cable I use is just like a cheap Amazon basics one. I don't really invest that much in cables. There's look, you should invest in good stuff, but like the cables, I don't, work with that kind of like requirement. I don't need good cables. The Amazon basic cables have been working fine for me. Put you over there. I think we've talked now everything about the camera. We'll put you down. My, my beloved GH5, you can go over here for a second. So how have I been carrying the camera? Well, frankly, I've just been carrying the camera by the lens. So the last few videos, I've kind of gotten away. I've, I've got the switch pod. I've got the Joby. I've got a Manfrotto Pixie. I don't use any of them anymore. I just hold the lens. I keep the camera, like I hold the camera in front of me because I'm just sick of always having to set the bag down, pick it up, get going. But speaking of camera bags, so just so you're aware, I bought all this stuff, nobody gave it to me. So what I've been, this is my camera bag that you guys have seen forever. I've been using this camera bag for years, but the new thing is, Hey, we get to mess with the GH5 some more. I bought this Peak Design clip, so like I was saying, I get really sick of carrying the camera bag, having to set the camera bag down, open it up, bring the camera, blah, 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 it sucks. So what I've started to do is I've got this little thing on here, you just do this, you just carry the camera. Then you're getting ready to vlog for a second, pull the camera out, yakety yakety yak, then you're done, put it back in. Oh, I love this. I should have bought one of these a long time ago because what I like, camera bag, you, I'm sorry, we've talked about you plenty of times before. But what I like so much about this is this is my tripod. Oh, it's so heavy. This is the KNF. Um, I don't remember the exact model of this. I bought this because my normal tripod, the Manfrotto B Free that the A7 III is on right now, uh, that used to be my travel tripod, but the legs have started to give out and I can only raise it up to like sitting height like it is right now before the legs will start swaying. So I bought this thing uh, to make up for that. And I don't mind this, but this is heavy. So I am, this is not like, 
what I'm gonna stick with. I do like it because it's, it's very stable, holds the camera, it's got a neat little head thing. It also extends out so you can uh, use it for like overhead shots if you really want to, which I think is a pretty neat feat. Breaking it right on camera. It does this, which is a pretty neat little feature to have. Um, but it's heavy. I'm looking for a carbon fiber tripod. That'll probably be the Peak Design tripod is the next tripod I really want to buy. It just has to be in stock. But the reason I use that Peak Design clip and then this tripod is the heads all work together. So I can switch very quickly between the tripod and the clip on my bag. So that's the, I love it because all these, you know, all these plates work together. It's like a system. It all, it all, it's making sense, right? There's a, there's a madness. There's a reason behind all of the madness. And then another couple uh, miscellaneous cameras I've been using is I've been using this. This is the GoPro Hero 8 Black. I, it still has the problem of not having a replaceable lens cover on it, but the colors that I get out of this, the image quality that I get out of this, the audio I get out of this is crazy. This is, it's a fantastic camera. If you're if you don't need it for action, it's really I've been using this all the time and this is the uh, I, be, I bought the GoPro El Grande This has been like what I've been keeping it on. It's like a selfie stick like a monopod. That's really big But it's very robust. I've used this in the rain together. I've used all of this stuff This is a great combination the El Grande and the GoPro Hero 8 Black If you need like a running camera or you need a camera that just has great stabilization these two together Mwah! I love it. I love it and then the camera that has really kind of changed like what I recommend to people as like their starter camera or where I recommend people like buy cameras, the iPhone 11 has changed so much about what I recommend. This camera is out of control good. And I know I kind of missed the mark on that. I didn't really, when this first came out, I was like, yeah, we talk about cell phones all the time. Yes, cell phones are great, but this is phenomenal. The front camera does 4K 60, has great low light performance. Um, the rear camera, they've got like an ultra wide. They've got a standard wide. This thing, it's changed. It's changed a lot. And uh, I'm gonna probably have to make a video and process like what this does to the lower end camera market because this thing is crazy good. I don't even, like my family camera, I don't even bring any of these cameras anymore. I just use this because it's, it's really, really good. So we've talked about the camera system, right? We've got the camera, the lenses, the audio. The thing that matters most to a camera that's like outside of it is the lighting, right? So like right now, I do not control the lighting. If it, it's getting kind of dark, so hopefully the camera's still looking good. Uh, but I don't control this in any way, shape, or form. So I normally use artificial lighting, and this has changed. This right here, this is the Falcon Eyes RX. Well, hold on, let me move this. This is the Falcon Eyes RX 18T which is just, it's an LED mat. That's all it is, it's a mat of LEDs. I love this light. I, I almost cursed there. I love, this is the best light I've ever, I've never used an LED panel before. I was like, wow, oh, they seem kind of weird. This thing is so great because it's not only is it like a big panel, it gets very bright. Um, but look at like, it folds down to nothing. The light I use in my normal studio and the light that I started off using here was the Aperture 120D2, which is a fantastic light. But when you set it up and then you get the light dome, it takes up so much space. Even with the light dome mini, it takes up so much space. Love the lights, but I needed something that doesn't take up my whole room. Look at that. Look at that. And then it even comes with, you see this? This is the diffuser. It's got nice diffusion material. It pushes out from the light a little bit. It's got this layer, but it also has a honeycomb so you can direct the light. Oh, I love this. I love this. And it folds up to nothing. It folds up. Look at this. Look at this. I've said that five times now, and that's for real. This is crazy. I will continue using this light. Um, I'm, I'm shocked. I use, I like, I cannot, even right now, this light's fantastic. If you've never used an LED panel, I highly recommend them. So you've captured all of that video. What are you captured on? Oh look, it's this thing that we've talked about a whole bunch too, which is what I keep my SD cards in. Boring, nobody cares. So what I've been using uh, to edit my video, yes, like I said in the video the other day, um, I've been using the MacBook Pro 16 and it's right over there. But what I use the majority of the time here and what I wanna talk about um, is the MacBook Pro 13, which fits in this handsome, this handsome case. We'll talk about this case in a second, but I've been using the MacBook Pro 13 for most of my time here. And this computer, this is the 2019 base model. So it's not upgraded or anything. This is a fantastic editing computer, especially if you use something like Final Cut Pro X, 
which I do. You can edit pretty reliably with, I do all my stuff in 4K. This handles the 4K. You do have to use in the like the performance mode and not the best quality mode, but I love this computer. It's super lightweight. It travels just so well. The big negative about it is it's only got two USB-C ports, so you will need a dongle. This is my dongle. I think I bought this at Best Buy. I don't even, I don't know the brand, J5 something. You just plug it in, gives you HDMI, gives you USB, gives you ethernet, gives you power through, but I would never use this because this thing gets hot. Even when I just have it plugged into a, an external monitor that I've been using. Um, and this thing gets hot, even if that's all that you do. It also has SD card ports and a micro SD card port. Something that I've been using to edit the videos when I'm traveling, uh, I've been using the AirPod Pro. I just put them in my ears, pair them with the laptop. They've got great noise cancellation and these are awesome for editing. Editing audio is very important, especially when you've made mistakes in the past like one of us. Not naming names every day, dad. How dare you? Uh, and you find yourself not having a channel of audio, always edit audio with headphones. And these headphones are phenomenal. They're so much better than the AirPod ones. I really, really like these. And then I've been doing all my editing since this is the base model. It's got a 256 gigabyte hard drive, which is mostly taken up with the operating system. Uh, so I have this Samsung T5. This is a 500 gigabyte. I just put everything on this and then render through the computer. It is like right now it's Black Friday. So I might upgrade this to a one terabyte today. I don't know. We'll see, this has been working perfectly fine. And then I keep all of this stuff. I don't remember what brand, Native Union. I bought this at the Apple store. I don't exactly remember what brand this is, but it just, it keeps everything together. So your cables go here, your mouse goes here, your power brick goes here, your AirPods go here. It just keeps everything together in this little bag. And then I've got this thing, and I definitely don't remember, oh, it is getting dark. We had to bump the ISO up because again, I don't control the light and it's getting dark. In case, this is the in case. So this is just the case I've been using, the sleeve that has kept my MacBook Pro 13. Works perfectly well. Works perfectly well. The thing that, that's not as exciting. What is exciting though, is this. This is my iPad mini. Uh, and you're like, well, iPad minis are kind of boring. But the new Catalina OS gives you this thing called Sidecar, which check this out. I, I didn't mean to put this away yet. Uh, but these together, these two things together, which easily fit in a backpack. Look at that. This gives you dual screen capabilities for editing. That's insane. Dual screens are just so much easier to use. You just click on the thing, you connect it to the iPad and it works. So this is all the gear that I use. It fits in a carry-on, easily gives you like high quality video production value. You've seen it in the last like two months of videos. This is the stuff that works. I love every bit of this. There will be links in the description below. And if you liked this video, I bet you would like that video where I talk about the GH5 as the perfect camera to this, the perfect system. Click here to watch it. Click, 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 click. Thanks for watching.